All right, well, this is Stacy and Scoots. We're here in the atrium at Tamarack Nature Center, part of Ramsey County Parks. Well, we're gonna give you a quick tour of some of the animals and their aquariums because you haven't been able to come into the building for quite a few months. But then we're gonna go behind the scenes, get a quick sneak peek at the back room, the animal care room, where it all happens, where the food gets prepped for all of our animal ambassadors. See ya, Scoots. All right, over here, we have got our garter snake. It's in its water bath. Don't forget, we also have Pablo, our painted turtle, just around the corner, very active today. There's Pablo. Behind that, on the other side, we've got our quickly growing hognose snake. We'll see if it's out. Oh, it is peeking out from under the water dish. And then speaking of snakes, we're gonna go check out our bull snake or gopher snake, see if they're out or if they're hiding right now. Then you know we've got our frogs and the salamanders, they're always underfoot, but you get to see them up close this week. There is our big bull snake, our gopher snake. And then next we've got, we'll take a little gander, a little peek at our tree frogs, and then we'll move on to the animal care room. There they are. And so we've got some awesome animals that are behind the scenes that helps all of these critters survive. And they happen to be in our animal care room. In a little bit, Noelle's going to help give us an up-close look at who those critters are. Here's our animal care room. Over on this counter over here is where the worms, the night crawlers, the crickets, and the cockroaches live. Next to that, there's a huge fridge and freezer. Hmm, think we've got popsicles in this freezer? No, that's the other freezer. Hold on a second. Shannon's going to open it. You can see, oh yeah, look at that. High protein filled mice, rats, and small chicks to help feed our owls and our snakes. All right. And then we've got the ever important cleaning sinks prep in a prep counter where all the log books happen where we can write down everything that happens and who eats when and a nice in-depth schedule all right we're going to move on and get an up close look at some of the behind the scenes critters that you don't get to see very often hi I'm Noelle and I work here at Tamarack. Um, part of my job means making sure that our animals have the food they need to eat. And so that's why I have some food out here for you guys to look at. Now, it's not probably the food that you're used to eating, but our turtles, our salamanders, and our frogs, and even the snakes might have some of these type of foods to eat. The first one I'm going to show you is um, our dubia roaches. So in this container, I have a whole bunch of roaches. So they have exoskeletons and the adults, the males, they even have wings. I'm gonna take one of those adults out for you to see. They move pretty quickly, but they don't fly even though they have the wings and they're very gentle. Sometimes during summer camp, we might build a fort or a playground for them to explore. It's kind of cool because they can also walk upside down and they can hold themselves while they walk upside down. So they'll walk tight ropes and things like that too. Do dubia roaches come in many different sizes because when they're born, they're smaller, about, well, about the size of a grain of rice. And as they grow, they just get bigger and bigger, shedding their exoskeleton or that hard skin on the outside of their body, and then getting a little bit bigger every time. And so eventually they reach the adult stage. The adult males have wings and the females have a very pretty shell that's very shiny. And I don't have any of them here. Hopefully they're deep in our colony laying lots of baby cockroaches. Their cockroaches um, are, or the dubia roaches have live birth. Hey, Noel, 
Yeah. Didn't we, didn't we see one of them that was like whitish? What, what, what's that about? Yeah, after they shed their exoskeleton or the outside of their body, they come out a uh, white color. Um, that white color is because of the exoskeleton being very soft. And as it gets hardened, it gets these pretty browns and the spots and things on it. But a lot of people think they might be an albino cockroach or albino roach, but they're not. They're just um, going through their life stages. Some of the animals that really like this, these um, cockroaches, are the salamanders. We give the tiny, tiny, tiny ones to the salamanders, and they'll eat two to four um, at a meal. And our turtles. The blanding turtle loves the adults with the wings and they'll float in water and he'll come up and he'll eat them. And then we even have an owl that likes to fish these roaches out of its water dish to eat. Hey, real quick question. So I've seen them up close and there's bumps on the top of their head. Are those their eyes? No, actually their eyes are um, and head are covered with um, a shield or a form of protection. We can't quite see their face unless we flip them upside down. And you know it's the head because you'll see the two antennae sticking up from it. And you'll also be able to see its mouth parts. Um, these guys eat plants and we have some dried food for them to eat. So they have to have a little bit of a bite so that they're doing that. I don't really worry about them biting me. They're not interested in me for food, but they're fun to play with and they have sticky kind of toes so they stick to things um, and kind of feels kind of ticklish or prickly on you when you're holding them. Cool, yeah, it is pretty funny. Okay, yeah. what other animals do you have there, Noelle? Well, you may have seen these guys before. These are a whole bunch of worms, and in here I have red worms, and then I also have those big, juicy night crawlers. And worms are a really good source of food for a lot of animals. Um, for example, you might see birds or robins out there looking in the soil for worms and they like them because they don't have that hard skin on them and they're easy for animals to digest. Here at the Nature Center, the turtles love worms and one of these big night crawlers can be a whole meal for a salamander. The salamanders really have to fight these worms because they can be strong too and the salamanders don't have teeth to really bite them so they're harder for them to eat. But our Blanding's turtle and our painted turtle, Pablo, they'll eat these guys and they have a sharp beak that's able to tear and pull it apart or they'll use their claws that have long nails on it to help um, get it into a way that it's easy to eat. But any of those animals will eat them while they're still alive. So they have a fight to put up to get these kind of food. So we have tons of night crawlers in here. I get the night crawlers from a farm where they grow worms for animals and things to eat. Sometimes these worms would even go for a fisherman to use to catch fish. But here at the Nature Center, they're food for our animals and they're pretty fun to play with too. Nice. Hey, who's in that last container over there? Yeah, the last container is um, of our crickets. So crickets, you might recognize them, they make kind of a chirping sound. We can find them outdoors in the s summer months, but these crickets are ones that are bought from a pet store, and they're ones that are special for food for reptiles and amphibians. So these crickets um, become food for our turtles. Um, they'll catch them in the water. Our frogs love these. One of these crickets is about um, an inch long, and our tree frogs will eat one to three of them in a day and they're able to catch them while they're moving around their enclosures. These guys are really good at jumping and moving around, and so it kind of presents a challenge for those frogs to catch them. In this container, I have a few of these crickets, but I'm constantly watching them to make sure they don't escape. The crickets are also um, pretty fast moving, so the salamanders, instead of chasing them, they will just sit and they'll wait for a cricket to go by its mouth and then it's quick and it pounces on it and eats that cricket. They'll use a kind of a soft, sticky tongue to catch it too. But that's kind of why tiger salamanders have their name tiger because like a tiger will wait for its food and then pounce on it, so will the salamander. They won't go off chasing it, they'll wait for the food to come right to their mouth and then grab it. So all of this stuff that you probably have seen before or have 
know a little bit about bugs or worms can be great food for our animals. They're able to get different nutrients and things from these, um, especially like the crickets and the roaches. They eat things that have calcium in it so that the animals can get calcium, which for turtles is important so that they have nice, strong shells. And for all living things, it's important to have calcium. So some weird stuff, but some nutritious food for the animals. Awesome. Thanks, Noel. Yeah. It's fun to see these behind the scenes critters. Yeah. Thanks for checking them out. Do you remember archery? Archery is one of the favorite activities here at Tamarack Day Camp, and I really miss having a whole bunch of kids up here to teach about bows and arrows. But if you have your own archery equipment, there are two places in Ramsey County where you can go to use them. There's the Marsden Archery Range in Arden Hills or the Archery Range at Keller Lake Regional Park. So if you have your own equipment or if you know of a place to rent some, go ahead and head on outside and check out those two places. If you don't have your own equipment, it's okay because I'm gonna show you how to make your own bow and arrow out of some really, really simple tools. Your own bow and arrow, who doesn't want one? I'm gonna show you how to make one. First, you need to find the perfect stick. Mine is a little bit curved. It wouldn't necessarily need to be. It just would need to be kind of flexible. You don't want it to snap when you pull back. This one's probably about three quarters of an inch diameter, a little bit bigger than my thumb. So it needs to be good and sturdy. And then we have this cotton poly string, cotton nylon string. I just got it at the hardware store. It's the white slippery stuff, comes on a spool. Tied it to either end. Now I had a hard time getting it tight, so I wrapped a rubber band around the string just to hold it in place to keep it from sliding on the stick. What you want is for your knots to be on the same side of the stick so that that is straight. And then I just used a kind of a medium width rubber band here. You could probably use one that was a little bit thicker than that. You wanna get it right over the string and that's gonna kind of hold it in place and keep things from sliding around. So there you have it, bow. You need the string to be kind of tight, not super tight. It'll loosen as you go. You might not need to retie it at some point. Then we need an arrow. So my arrow has all the parts of a regular arrow. I don't have a pointy tip. That's what this little piece of felt is for. Um, it weights the end down a little so it'll fly better. And then the knock on the arrow helps us hold the arrow to the bow string. And I made my knock out of masking tape. I did not put any fletching on it. You could put some feathers on it if you wanted to, but mostly you need a little bit of weight at the end and a knock at the other end. So you need a piece of felt. I used red because it's really easy to find if my arrow goes astray. It's about, you're gonna want something that's four to five inches square and a little handful of sand. You don't need a ton of weight. You just put the end in there, fold your felt up and then use another rubber band to hold it all together. So there's my tip. To make my knock, I just need some masking tape. I just happen to have purple, but you can use whatever color you want. You're going to, on the other end, put the tape around. You want it to kind of hang off the end there. So you're not gonna tape just the end. You're going past the end and then you're just gonna wrap it around. So my piece of tape here is probably about six inches long. I found that if you have a little bit longer piece or maybe if you do two shorter pieces, it works pretty well. I'm just doing one for now. Smash the end down so that it's flat. You don't want it to be too long. I think I actually made this a little bit long so I'm gonna trim it a little bit and then I'm gonna cut my notch. So now I have my knock, my point, I'm ready to go. Let's see if I can get either one of these arrows to hit the target. I have my two arrows. We're gonna see which one flies the best. This is the quarter inch dowel. It's about 17 inches long. I would not make it any longer than this. This one's about three eighths of an inch and then it's about 12 inches long. So one at a time here, get the knock over your string. You're gonna hold it with one finger above and one finger below. And um, make sure you get your fingers out of the way, otherwise it won't fly very well. Ah, that was not bad. 
clearly they don't fly as well as a regular arrow, but you can experiment with different kinds of string and different ways to hold it. I have found that I've had mixed luck using different ways to hold it. Ooh, that one actually disappeared over the target. So have some fun, experiment a little bit, see what works. It's a great way to kill some time in your backyard without hurting anyone. Hi, it's Stacy at Tamarack Nature Center. Yes, I'm in a tunnel, but I'm not just playing around. I wanted you to stop and think and look. When you look at me, I'm in a tube, but when you look through this, don't you look at things maybe a little differently? So for this portion, we have a really simple, kind of an artsy project that you can do if you have paper, scissors, or a really old picture frame. Follow me. All right, so if you have an old picture frame, or you even make one, maybe a small one, take it on a walk somewhere and stop, and it'll help you kind of frame your, your view. So instead of looking at the big picture, it helps you focus on something small. Maybe you take that frame and you drop it and you just look at what's inside it. Or maybe you hold it up and look in a new space and see what you see. Or a bigger old rustic frame to frame what you see up in the sky, the shadows, the clouds, the silhouettes, the leaves, a whole view. Or you get out a piece of paper. <clears throat> you can fold it in half and cut and make some different shapes to make your own nature frame to hold up and look through. Whether it's a heart or another symbol, whether it's an animal or an insect like a butterfly, or whether you do it in panes, kind of like stained glass. Check out where we took our nature frames for, to give you a couple ideas.